a lot of fans have been asking how you got along with The Undertaker and if you're disappointed there was never that big feud of you versus The Undertaker that you mentioned there was talk about at one point. Yeah. Well, I always looked up to him, even before I started the WWF, of course. I started my career in Maritimes in 1990. And the same here, he started with, uh, with the, as the Undertaker. Uh, and I, I've, I've been following his career before, as me and Mark Callis in WCW. Was that, like I said, I was digesting, I was wrestling left and right. I was a bigger fan, I think I was a bigger fan of the NWA before WCW. Because in my mind at the time, I thought that WWF was cartoon-ish. You know, they had the animals and the gimmicks. But then WWE was real pro wrestling. That's how, that's how I kind of in, you know, interpret it. But, uh, and then, but I remember seeing me and Mark Callis. Same size as me. Big guy. But you can freaking move. Amazing ability as, as when I saw as me and Mark. So I, I was very impressive. And then, when I saw him first time, as, as everybody else did, as a surprise wrestler in Survivor Series, as an indicator, I recognized him right away. I mean, Mark, they brought him in. So I was pretty excited about that because I knew he was going to do interesting things. I knew what, what he was capable of physically. He was a very impressive guy. So I was always a fan of his over the years. And, uh, and when I when they brought me in when I, when I, in, in the roster, you know, in the, in the WWF, he was there all the time. He was always the leader of the locker room, so I always respected him, about, you know, because of that. Uh, I, I was trying. And he knew he knew I was going to work with him one day in the future. He wanted to work with me because they were they were, they were, they were losing. You know, there's not a lot of big guys for for taking the work. So the idea of working, you know, I think he, he was happy about that. But, so he was always backstage um, after my matches. He would after a day of match or a, a TV match or squash match. He was come after the match. He was come come up to me. He would be at the gorilla position and basically pull me aside and tell me to do this and don't do that. He was happy with this and like, give me a little bit of advice. Which my ears was <laughs> always open to him. So I was I always felt great when he, you know, he was trying to help me. So, I mean, I was very grateful for that. Always, like I said, grateful, very, uh, always hang out with him when he, during the day, he was hanging out with his, with his, his, his friends, his boys, and I was always go up to him, uh, shake hands with him. And we would go to bars. We would go, go to, I mean, the Truth Commission would go to the bar and the, after, after the show. He would be there with his group and basically buying us drinks. Very cool cat, you know. And uh, so I was looking forward to do working with him, you know, of course. But of course, the direction didn't go the way it was supposed to go, maybe because I was maybe too green at the time. I don't know. But I remember one day, uh, one day when we were flying into Dayton, it was Dayton, Ohio. Uh, uh, it was TV taping. And then I saw you know, on the list of uh, match on the card, or the list of matches, the Undertaker versus Kurgan. And I got excited. Oh, this is cool. I knew it was not, not, not going to be, uh, uh, I knew it was not, not going to go over, obviously. But because the way we were heading, we were jobbing from the most of everybody. They weren't, they, weren't, they weren't pushing us. That's fine. Which is fine. But I, I was hoping to get him. At least a decent match. You know, two big guys. You think we kind of even it out. You could get take her over at the end, you know, just as he should be. But uh so I was getting excited. And then uh, when it came to talking about our matches, you know, with the agent, Briscoe, I think, and Taker, basically our time was five minutes. So <laughs> including intro. So I knew I knew right away that's not going to be uh, the match I wanted to, wanted to have, but whatever. I did the best that I could. He, I, he wanted, of course, it's, it finishes the tombstone, and he looked at me basically. Uh, 
Now, he knew he didn't want to do the tombstone because it was too tall. But in my head, I was kind of happy, you know. I didn't want to take the tombstone either. But I did mention the choke slam. Well, you can choke slam me. And he, he didn't think I, he could, he, I could do it. He didn't think I could jump for him. Which I never took a choke slam before. So I didn't know I could do it. So, okay, choke slam then. You know, a couple spots, uh, flying clothesline, blah, 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 punches in the corner, to throw me in the turnbuckle and come out and choke slam. I asked, so after I talked to him, I asked, uh, before the match, I asked all the wrestlers who took choke slams, like Edge, Christian, <laughs> veterans of taking choke slams, to, asking them how to do a proper choke slam. So, you know, all that leverages and pushing, timing, all that stuff. So, but when the time, and not the match was short, but it was very memorable because I've been so used to watching the Taker, his intro on TV over the years, you know, his famous int- uh, ring entrance. And then all of a sudden, I go in the ring first, and then the you know, Taker comes out with the lights down, the smoke, and then the, the bong and the music, and I was like freaking out. I was like, I was still, I was marking out. <laughs> so, there was a whole cry. I'm in the ring. I'm not on my living room watching TV. I'm in the ring. He's going to work with me. You know? It was intimidating. Uh, but the match was short. I got up for him, though. For the puppies. Puppies. I hate dogs. Yes. Uh, I, I jumped for him big time for the choke slam. I, I did as much as I could. And I remember the guy, I got a good pop out of it when I, when I, when I took the bump. And at the end of it, uh, they destroyed the oddities. They, they suspended, you know, basically the Ministry of Darkness destroyed the oddities and that was that. And, and then after the match, Taker came up to me and said he was happy. Didn't think, he was impressed that I could go up for him. So that's why I wanted, I wanted to leave a good impression. The, the idea of just coming back down the road. You know, not to forget me. Show them that I could work. I can take up I'm a good bumper. You know, that was it. that was the idea. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for dollar ninety nine a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.